7.30 p.m. Two and a half extra hours of work. At this point, you're still not sure why you decided to stay late. You shift your body weight to the left of your painfully average office chair, the seat screaming in relief as much as your prickling right leg. It's not like ABBA and Dawn Printing Incorporated needs you to put in the extra work. In fact, this month's numbers are up higher than the last six, almost as if the company was finally letting out an exhale after months of holding its breath. You look at the calendar taped to the wall next to your computer. There's a hastily scrawled circle around the number 15. That's right, you're a slave to the wage. The more hours you put in now, the more you don't have to worry about this coming Friday. For once, you're grateful for that strict no overtime rule. Your mind halts mid-thought as you catch what sounds like laughing, talking, chanting. How strange, you were told to lock up tonight, so why would someone else be here? Cautiously, you step your way down the hall and around the corner, each step hitting the corporate gray carpeting as tenderly as possible. You can't quite make out how many voices you hear, but it's certainly not a single person. Normally, this wouldn't be a cause for concern at all, but both Lucy Abba and Fernald Don were out on business trips, and no one's permitted to be in their wing when they're out. You lean your ear closer to the hall, the invisible wall of fear holding you back from venturing any further. Like you need repercussions for entering off-limit areas. It's bad enough you're staying late. What on earth is going on? These sounds... You take one more cautious step forward. You gasp as the ringing phone nearly stops your heart. Without a second thought, you dash back to your desk and answer, trying your best not to sound like you just nearly succumbed to cardiac arrest. Hey, heard you were working late. How's the office all alone at night? You've never been so glad, yet so irritated to hear Sal's voice. Yeah, yeah, I know. You've got stuff to do. Don't let me keep you. Just give me a call before you lock up. I wouldn't mind grabbing a drink when you're through. Sal's an odd one, to say the least. Even more odd is the fact that you didn't even tell him you were working late. He must be getting some insider info from the higher-ups. Leave it to Sal to go full suck-up now that the company's doing well. You swallow hard as your throat tenses, your mouth feeling as if you'd swallowed a handful of sand. Slowly, you stand up from your chair and head toward the water fountain between the restrooms. Just one more hour of this. You can handle it. Your eyes catch a glimpse of Sal's desk as you lean in toward the fountain. Weird. Did he leave his jacket here? There it is again. There's at least five or six people down the hall in a room doing something. As you pick your head up from the fountain, you look out towards Sal's desk again, that horribly oversized sports jacket nearly swallowing the chair it rests on. You start toward the hallway where the noise is coming from, only for the phone to ring once more. You dash back to your desk and answer. Hey buddy, Sal again. I was thinking, why don't you call it an early night and take off? I mean, you don't really need to stick around for another hour, do you? You pull the phone away from your ear as you notice something strange. An echo? You there? Seriously, Seriously why, why don't, don't you take off? off? We both know how soul-crushing it is to stay in the office. You leave the phone off the ringer as you again step toward the hall where the noises had come from earlier. Hey, you still there? Seriously, you should leave. You groan as you hear Sal's muffled voice coming from behind the first office door in the hall. Of course. He's the one that's been making all of that noise. It's spooky enough being stuck in the office at night, but this... Come on. There you are. Another voice growls behind the door. Then, you hear a sickening wet gurgle and a heavy flop to the floor. Your breaths start to grow heavy as you back away from the door, your heart beating rapidly. You dash to the phone you left off the receiver and bring it to your ear. Hey buddy, I'm coming by the office for something. Why don't you meet me and have an Don's wing? There's something you need to see. The voice was wrong. You know you just heard Sal. 
And this definitely wasn't him. You slam the phone down on the receiver and start heading toward the stairwell. As you make it to the door, you hear what sounds like several doors opening down the hall, followed by an army of footsteps. Your cautious steps break into a sprint as you burst through the stairwell door and dash down the steps. But to your horror, you hear the ground floor door burst open as well, accompanied by footsteps heading up the stairs below you. Thinking quickly, you opt to go out to the second floor rather than facing who's coming at you. There's a fire exit on the opposite side of the building. That'll make for a good exit. As you dash through the second floor door, you snag the water cooler to the left and place it in front of the opening. It won't hold forever, but it'll at least buy you some time. The ringing on this floor seems deeper somehow, but you know that's just the adrenaline pumping through you. You're not sure why, but you're compelled to answer it. You dash to the cubicle with the ringing and snag the phone. Hey buddy, I'm here in the executive wing. Where are you? You drop the phone as your water cooler blockade begins to struggle against the pounding of the door. No time. You need to go. As you run toward the fire exit on the opposite side of the room, it seems as if the entire floor's phones start chastising you. Ignoring the shrill screams of the ringers, you thrust open the fire escape door and make your way out onto the riggedy metal steps hugging the side of the building. With freedom smiling at you on the ground below the fire escape steps, you can't help but look up at the window above. This escape goes directly to Abba and Don's wing. A look couldn't hurt, right? After all, if you're going to report this to the Uncanny Cove police, you want to at least know there's a case in the first place. And besides, your curiosity has gotten the best of you. As you peer into the window, your stomach churns at the sight. In the center of Abba's office is Sal, face up on the floor. Around him in a circle, is what appears to be coins scattered about. Outside of those coins are five candles, all lit and burning brightly. Upon further inspection, you notice Sal's throat slit completely open. The blood seems to have pooled in an interesting pattern, almost as if someone had intentionally cut three intersecting triangles into the floor for the blood to run through. Then, the door swings open. You lock eyes with Abba, her pale and sharp face beaming underneath her intimidatingly angular blonde hair. Flanking her are three men in suits you've never seen before. As you fall backwards in shock, your momentum carries you farther than you anticipated. You desperately grab for the rail of the fire escape as your body flips over the edge, sending you tumbling down all three stories. You hit the pavement hard, your only saving grace being the dumpster that ricocheted your flailing body. As the adrenaline starts to settle, the pain slowly starts to seep into every ounce of your body. Then all at once, your sight fades. We already have the other one. There's no need for another. Your eyes slowly open as you find yourself sitting back in the office. Before you can truly examine your surroundings, you feel the pointed jab of something on your neck. You wince as you discover it's an ornate knife. With just a little more effort, it easily pierce you. Listen good. You don't work for me anymore. As your eyes adjust, you find that it's Fernald Dawn glaring at you, the knife in his hand still tightly against your neck. Another man in a suit you don't recognize steps into the dimly lit room next to Fernald, his eyes narrow and his face weathered. Your severance of 500,000 is on the table. You fell down the stairs after working late. You don't know anything. Understand? His words are almost more piercing than the knife Fernald has at your throat. You swallow hard as you look back at Fernald Dawn, your mind racing. So, what happened to you tonight? What did you see? You swallow hard weighing the options before you. What did you see tonight?